you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, welcome to Relax the Podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. Yeah, right. I am. No, I mean, I who promise. are you talking to? Who am I? T- what do you mean? Who am- what do you mean? Yeah, right. Who, who would I- possibly be listening to this after last week's know. episode? Probably everybody. I think I, I looked, think we got more subscribers. I looked. We lost a hundred thousand subscribers. Did we? Uh huh. Yeah, so because sure. you made me do an episode by myself. I'm sure everyone. I'm sure it's everyone's favorite episode. Honestly, no. I bet it is. Um, I am excited to be here with you though this week, love. Yeah, you're back. I'm back. You're back. We're back together. You're wearing sunglasses inside the house today. Uh, yep, You're they're hiding the crazy. bags under my eyes. The bags under my eyes have bags under their eyes. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel too, This lovey. is how I hide it. Who needs to relax today for you, Mr. Stocklin? I have a thing uh-huh. that drives me crazy. I'm sure it's something that I do. I do have one of those, but I'm yeah. saving it for later. Okay. I will, Yeah, I have a few relaxes. I'll start off with this, though. Okay. Um, since the pandemic, there is there is mm-hmm. uh, this thing that has happened to us everywhere in public places. There is hand sanitizer dispensers. Yes. And so I, we were all looking out for each other. And we were and uh, somebody was filling those at one point. Yeah. I assume I assume they weren't just put up empty. Right. And left empty forever. Right. Now, I swear, every hand sanitizer dispenser in public in the world is empty. They're all empty. Yet I, I still, when I see, when I feel the urge. Where did this happen to you recently that made you so The grocery upset? store. Okay. The, the backstage at your show mm-hmm. the other night. Everywhere. And you go, when you go up to one of those things in public and you stick your hand under and it goes, and nothing comes out. Or you press the pump and nothing comes out. To me, it's, it's like, there's like an embarrassment. Mm-hmm. There, it's like akin to like when you open a door the wrong way, you mm-hmm. like push instead of pull in front of people. Like mm-hmm. it's the same kind of like, oh, uh, like awkward kind of right. embarrassment. And it drives me crazy. I'm so sorry that you're going through that right or now. We should just take them down or we should fill them up. Yeah, maybe fill them up. I mean, you could do it. You could take it upon yourself to be the... Is that a billion dollar idea if I start a business <clears throat> filling hand sanitizer dispensers? I don't dispensers? think it's a million dollar idea. No. Uh, how much? Ten. <laughs> <laughs> They're all t- if you're listening to this, which you aren't because no one is, um, leave a comment if you find one that's full and I'll go to that one, well, wherever it is. You know, what? the theater that we just performed at in Thousand Oaks over the weekend, it did not <clears throat> have any hand sanitizer in their hand sanitizer dispenser. However, they did have a dispenser machine for earplugs backstage. They did, I saw that, yeah. And they were orange. Yes. And I'm so dumb that when I first saw it, I was like, oh, how cute, they have a Cheetos ex- dispenser. <laughs> I thought it was like a little thing that would dispense Cheetos. Yeah, I can't really argue with the dumb thing because that's pretty dumb. I know. It was earplugs. Mm-hmm, it was earplugs. I noticed that too, but I didn't stick my hand under it to see if then just earplugs would drop out. I don't know how they would come out I of that either. thing. Um, yeah. So, so you know, soap things when you like it is automated soap things at a sink when nothing you know, comes out like of there. I don't like the water ones. They're like the automatic. They they can feel when your hands are ne- never. No, they never go off for me. Like I always am like waving my hands all around yeah. it underneath it. And like once I pull my hands away, it starts going. Right. And then it turns off, but it doesn't go long enough to like get the soap off. Like I hate those. Like if you're in an airport listening to this right now and you go into the bathroom, go into the bathroom. We'll we'll wait. We'll go with you. Now go up to the sink. Put your hand under. No soap's coming out. The it's soap empty. dispenser's never empty. Always empty. Like nah. a little bit of foam will come out and still be stuck to the tip of it. And you'll have Ew. to kind of like. No, I don't touch it if it does that. But I don't feel like, I feel like. Just using water? Hand sanitizer. No. You just raw dog no, it with water when you wash your hands? Hand sanitizer, yeah, is always empty. But the soap I don't feel like is ever really empty. That's, I mean, I Maybe don't this know. is women's bathrooms. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. So who's your next relax? Because I know it's me. You. Yeah. What is it? Turn into a monster. Okay. When, when we are out of an item in our fridge. Can what? you guess what it is? Sour cream. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, I don't know who in this, in this story needs to relax, but you got um, frozen box. Poison. For, for a family of 16 tray of chicken enchiladas. Otherwise known as poison. And it, it was poison. It was mush poison. It was absolute poison. You it, you cooked it for four hours, as the box indicated. Yeah, it was so weird. I, and I, then you took it out of the oven 
And you must have looked in the fridge. I wasn't there for this. Yeah, I, I was did. just there and for the no aftermath. There was no sour cream, guys. It was and there was drama. no sour cream. This is the problem of is that I feel like every time I buy sour cream, I get made fun of it because I do all the grocery shopping Ooh, and I feel like by the clerk, by the grocery no, clerk. No, every my uh, people in our life always go, "Wow, you have six hundred sour creams in your fridge." Whenever they open, who's up. saying this? Literally, everyone who's ever opened our fridge. And so I've been like trying to be better. I'm like, okay, we have sour cream. I don't need to get it this time. So the last couple times I've done the grocery shop, I haven't got sour cream because I assumed we had six thousand sour creams because everyone always pokes fun at me. Who are these sour cream deniers? First of all, you have done it to me before. <laughs> and second of all, like people in my family, people who've opened the fridge to look, we always have like a million mustards and a million sour creams. It's like the joke about Colleen. She always buys really? too many mustards and sour creams. Man. And so I was like, fine, I That's will rude. be more aware of this. You've been one of these people, I've by never the way. You, I, you. I actually remember a time at our old house where you pulled out the sour creams one at a time and like <laughs> slammed them on the counter. We're like, look how many we have. So I don't, I hadn't <laughs> bought any in a, in a minute, like in a couple weeks. And so there was one thing of sour cream in there and it was empty, which is my big pet peeve that you are the culprit of in this house. He Whoa. will put an empty box back in the freezer. What? Psychotic. I won't love. do that. Are you well, serious? I can, talk about, I, can, I can talk about the sour creams. Oh, please talk about it. Because the sour yeah. creams we buy now are in like sour cream baby pouches. Yeah. They don't come in the tub <laughs> anymore. It's like a squirt pouch. Well, they do come in the tub. But we it's buy like, the squirt pouch. It's like an insulated, of course they do, but it's like an insulated pouch. So it feels uh, thicker than what's the substance that is in there. You know, and once you get to the bottom anyways, it's kind of like watery. But yeah, I, I, I don't want you to feel angry. So I always, I'm putting those back empty or not. I'm like... That makes just me for angry. Like, just for like fridge aesthetic. He puts he puts empty boxes like granola bars for our kids. I'll go to grab a granola bar for the kids, and there'll be like four empty boxes of granola just, bars you in the cupboard. Just be thanking me that they're fed, not mocking me for my box thanking etiquette. You that they're fed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm feeding our kids. It's a lot. There's three of them. So empty box I. goes back. I, I'm, I'm That's pretty them much too, recycling. But- Okay. Anyway, he does it in the fridge, in the freezer. The other day I was like, I'll make them some chicken nuggets for dinner. It'll be a simple night. Pull out a huge box. Empty. Anyway, go ahead about my sour cream debacle. Well then, yeah. Well then you, you, I went to you and I was like, I I did something dumb. You you said my life's over. You go like my life's over. I cannot eat this without sour cream. <laughs> I, say that. <laughs> like, I said, I'm cr- so sad. I was dramatic you go, about the it. The worst thing in the world has like, happened. This is so sad. I made enchiladas and I cooked it for hours and I can't eat it because there's no sour cream. Because who eats enchiladas without sour cream? That'd be so disgusting. So I was, we're big sour cream lovers in this house. We love sour cream here. And, um, I was so sad. So I was telling you how sad I was thinking in my dumb brain in my like, <laughs> In my passive little brain, I was like, maybe if I say how sad I am and how bad I want sour cream, I'll be like, I'll go get you some sour cream because <laughs> I was about to put the kids to bed. I was about to put Flynn to bed. Um, and um, so I was like, oh, I'm just so sad. I need this sour cream for my enchiladas. We don't have any sour cream. And, yeah. um, and Eric didn't read my mind <laughs> <laughs> and offered to go get it. What? I offered to order some. No. That wasn't. You said, so then I was like, oh, and I just, I wouldn't let go. Instead of just saying like, hey, do you mind please go getting this? I didn't do that because I'm dumb. And I was just like, kept whining about how there's no sour cream. And so finally Eric goes, did you want me to go get it? Like you were like, what? Like the you're trying of, to understand the, the puzzle. Like, it, this is the moment of the day. It was, it was the, the exact, I, I'd been on my feet for 16 hours and it was the exact moment when I could finally sit down. The amount of TikToks that I see that I resist the urge to send you where it's like, oh, right when you're about to sit down, the wife, can you what fill my water? What the heck kind of TikTok <laughs> for you page do you have I'm on that like, it is that I'm kind on of like TikTok? That is dick, putrid. Dick dude husband. Truly. <laughs> for you page. <laughs> because guess who else has been on their feet for 16 plus hours the whole day? I know. Um, yeah. But guess what I did do? Well, you did. But first, he, so first, I... I, first, I love how you're turning just, this around on me. No, I'm not. I'm t- I t- take full I responsibility went, that I was a monster about the sour cream. You go, there's a grocery store. It's open. No, five okay. So, away. well, because first he said, Aww. what if I order from this Mexican restaurant? Because he knew, because he's not stupid, he knew, knew the enchiladas, enchiladas were going to be garbage. terrible. It's like yeah. frozen enchiladas that have been in our freezer for like 20 years. The box was like smushed at like the bottom. It was like they were not good. And he knew they weren't going to be good. So like, and even when I said like, I'm making these enchiladas, you don't have to eat them if you don't want to. Usually if we make each other dinner, we're like, oh, thank you. He's like, huh. <laughs> so like, I knew he didn't want them, which is fine. But then, so then he was like, well, how about I order food? And with the food I order, get I'll get sour, sour cream. cream. And I was like, 
no, it'll take an hour to get here. Like I need sour cream now. <laughs> and then I said, and then I looked and I go, no, it'll take 30 minutes. And I was like, 30 minutes is that too long. That was too long. And um, so then I looked at my, he, and he was like, there's no grocery stores nearby. That are open. So then I looked up, I was like, there's a grocery store five minutes away. Yes, you found. And the reason it was him and not me is because Flynn wanted me to cuddle him to sleep that night. So Flynn was like asking me to do it. It was your turn. It was my turn. So um, I was like, please, can you just go get it? And he was like, and I was like, never mind, never mind, never mind. And he was like, no, I'm, well, I'm sorry. I wasn't jumping from the rooftops about <laughs> r- going to the grocery store at 9 p.m. to get sour cream. And I was like, no, never mind. Never mind. I don't need sour cream. Yeah, never mind. Stormed off. And I was like, I don't need it. And I the, didn't hero, storm off. the hero <laughs> that I am, I put my shoes on, got in the car. Drove five minutes. And drove five minutes. <laughs> It's a very interesting groceries. But you said it ended market. up being a great experience because then I apologized. I texted him and I was like, hey, sorry, I freaked out about sour cream. I'm tired. I'm sorry. And then when you got back, I said it again. I was like, hey, I'm really sorry that I like asked you to go get me that sour was cream. Very, later I'm mature of you. <clears throat> and then uh, you said, I didn't even mind because the grocery store was so cool. Yeah, it was like a new one that was secret uh, grocery store that we found. Um, and then we ate the enchiladas uh, separately. Mm-hmm. And then we're texting each other. Not because of fighting, but because no. I was, yeah, that yeah, sounded really yeah. bad. Oh, no. did it? Yeah. Well, it just sounded like it was like, we were like, we're not eating together. No, no it wasn't sh- that. There was a show I wanted to he watch. He was watching a TV student, show and, and then were, I was working. So I was eating yeah. enchiladas while working. And then he ate the enchiladas. Well, I just wanted to say the funny part was that we were then texting each other. <laughs> yeah. What is this? I I'm him. sick. <laughs> I'm on the toilet now. What's happening? I text him. Oh my God, my enchiladas are ass. And he, and normally... Yeah, I feel like normally if someone would respond like, oh, no, they're not so bad. Or like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. But he was like, yeah, these are horrible. They're so disgusting. And so then we're I going to go, back. Oh I had my to God, go check so the bad. box to be like, what's in this? Because it was just like <laughs> poison, like weird uh, rubbery tortilla around oh, uh, so a, like a smooth, like uh, brown mush that like there was. And then I looked at the box and said there was like nine different things in there, like. It was horrendous. Rice, beans, chicken, like all this stuff, but it was all one consistency, one color. Yeah, it was. It was literally mushy. It was. Um, and it didn't matter how much sour cream you put on that. No. Basically, all I did was eat sour cream. Like, I was just like <sighs> eating spoons of sour cream to just not to avoid the mush. So, yeah, it was not but good. But that was pretty funny. Well, you guys, we're going to take a little breaky break to say thanks to our first sponsor. Our first sponsor is Way. You guys, it's still January. That means I feel like we can still talk about New Year's resolutions, right? Some people are still doing their New Year's resolutions. Summer is just unraveling at this point. Yeah. So did you have any New Year's resolutions this year? Sure. Cool. Uh, Better hair. (laughs) Better hair products. (laughs) But like a lot of people do like self-care, you know, resolutions. Yes. I, you know, yeah, little, I say for the most part, it's it would small actions that can make a big impact. Little things like I'm going to eat more vegetables. You know, it's it's good to have like reasonable ones that are like, oh, I'm going to cut out this in my life or just little things. Just improve your life a little bit. Baby steps. Because a 15 little minute meditation habit, something like that could really make a big change in your life per day. I'm not doing it. I should. I'm just saying these are things people do who are smarter than me. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Maybe your New Year's resolution is just, you know, have less dandruff. You know, maybe that's your... Maybe more. Who knows? Then this but is <laughs> Most of us have dealt with dandruff at some point in our lives. I know yeah. I definitely have. Same. Um, in fact, one in five of your friends is a flaky lady or sir. That's it? I feel like it'd be more. I know. I did too, but that's still a lot. But for all the flaky friends in the group, keeping your resolution to stop flaking on your plans just got a lot easier with way. Flake free is the way to be in 2023 with Way's new anti-dandruff shampoo. If you want to get rid of your dandruff, if you want to keep it, that is your prerogative. Do it. But if you don't want it, you could try this out. So um, the Way products, we've been using them for a while because they've sponsored us for a while. They're lovely. I really like they their shampoo. They smell great. We, act, we do good. use them. We really, of course we do. I've done They're, a hair mask. I know. They're great. Way knows the way. And in fact, I've had friends who've come over and seen uh, that we have way and been like, oh my God, I love this stuff. Right. So um, people have stolen it from us, family that is members actually of true. yours. Uh, can you spell way for me? It is 
O U A I. Yeah. I was getting to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, um, anyway, uh, so my hair, I do have some dandruff and I have my hair, you know, is pretty fragile because I straighten it a lot. I use a lot of heat products on it. So that's always been a concern for my hair and the way products have helped me out with that. My hair, how, how's your hair feel after love? I feel like it feels pretty good. Sorry. He took a sip of LaCroix right when I asked that, but, um, how does my hair feel after a mask? Yeah. Fabulous. Right. Yeah. Luxurious. I would say even Amazing. which is not a word I use often. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's been pretty great and it has helped with my dandruff. It's helped with, um, the softness of my hair. And, uh, so we, we enjoy after 28 days, a hundred percent of participants agreed that they saw fewer flakes and their scalp felt less itchy and irritated. Isn't that cool? That was based on a 28 day consumer study of 25 participants. It's smart to study your products for 28 days with consumers. I feel I agree. Uh, way gives you the confidence to win life your way. It's founded by celebrity hairstylist, Jen Atkin with a goal of giving consumers what they want instead of telling them what they need. That's why every product is designed for effortless routines and your life, your way. Jen's a cool name. Yeah, I know. Do more than drugstore with the new, Anti-dandruff shampoo from Way. Go to T H E O U A I dot com and use code RELAX for 15% off your entire purchase. That's T H E O U A I dot com, code RELAX. Okay, love, you want to know who I think needs to relax? I would love nothing more. I feel like usually yours have to do with me. Um, and I rarely do no. ones that have to do with you. I don't know. I think it's pretty even. But today's the day. Mm, okay, but today's the day, love. I'm scared. You're, you shouldn't be scared. You should know this one is coming. Okay. Because I've been excited to talk about it. Okay. I've talked about this one before, but I have a new story. Who needs to relax is sleeping Eric. Oh God. You're bringing it again? Yeah. We've talked about this before. <laughs> how Eric turns into, is it okay if I say this lovey? An ass. <laughs> <laughs> he's asleep, but he's not conscious. So. An he's, ass? Yeah. Interesting. I mean that with love. Yeah. I think you would agree. You've literally in your sleep. Set I don't up. know that I've ever called, like, you're being an ass. You literally have in your sleep. Called you an ass? Yes, you called me an <laughs> asshole because I woke you up because yeah, yeah, you were yeah. snoring. I said asshole, I didn't say ass. <laughs> I feel like asshole's worse. Can we say asshole on this podcast? Well, sure, but like, I feel like ass is like just the, an entire ass is worse than just the whole. Whereas asshole, no, I mean the whole is worse than the whole <laughs> ass. Like an ass is like, it's I'm got the nice cheekies. It's like, it can be cute, but like a whole. So you're calling me, nah. yeah, I'm cheeky. I'm cheeky when I sleep. So no, I, I'm just saying you, I said the whole ass I'm is the whole, whole. Ass. you're the whole ass. You're a cheeky. <laughs> yes. Correct. 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 Anyway. So you've definitely called me that before, but then yes, it's I'm fine. saying it with love. You said it with aggression and anger while he's sleeping <clears> once. So Eric, when he's sleeping, just turns into not Eric. He's someone else. And the other day, uh, the other night, rather, Eric feels very bad about this, by the way. He's, and he's maybe a little embarrassed about it. Right, lovey? Um, how how should one feel when they do things when they're unconscious? Like, uh, and they affect the person that you love. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel, it's a bit embarrassing, yeah. Because I'm not, it's weird. I'm like, it's like, uh, it's like you did something after you had like wisdom teeth medication. You know what I mean? Like, you, it's not you. Yeah. Well, when you had your wisdom teeth medication, you're very nice. <laughs> so Eric, I've talked about this before in the podcast. When Eric is sleeping and if I wake him up, watch out. He has called me an asshole in the past for this. <laughs> Stomped around, but furious, like, and Stomped. he usually doesn't remember. So he says. So the other, you do remember this one though. So this version of Eric was not mean. It wasn't a mean Eric. It was a gaslighting Eric. <laughs> and it was... Probably my favorite <clears throat> conversation I've had with you while you were sleeping ever in our whole relationship. So I had a show in Thousand Oaks the next day and Eric, um, sometimes he snores a little bit, my little lovey. I and was I, sick in my defense. It doesn't matter if you're sick or just not. Just to you, set the scene, okay. I, I was, I had a cold and I had <laughs> taken two Advil PM. Yeah. But I mean, you snore without that stuff too. You kind of, we've talked about this on the podcast before. You snore a lot, which Who's is fine. Who's to say? I, I am. I have one of your But anyway, so he was snoring. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal. I was like on my phone, watching TikToks, like playing my Sudoku, whatever. It's your new thing. And I was like, oh, he's snoring. It's not bothering me. I'm not trying to sleep. So it's fine. But then it got really loud. And sometimes he snores loud enough where it's like, it never really bothers me, but it was like, sometimes I'm concerned for your health with mm -hmm. it. So it got to that point. And I was Scary. like, uh. 
should I do something about this? And Flynn had just crawled into bed with us like an hour prior. Mm -hmm. This is like 2.30 in the morning, something like that. Three, I don't know. And Flynn had just crawled into bed. So Flynn's sleeping in between us. And Flynn sits up and looks over at Eric like, what is he doing? So it's like, I gotta wake him up. So I reach over and I sweetly rubbed him like this, like rubbed his arm sweetly. Like it wasn't a nudge, it wasn't a thump. It was like a sweet rub. And he goes, why did you wake me up? And I said, you were snoring. And he said, I wasn't asleep. And I was like, what? Why is it so funny about this thing? story to you that I said I wasn't asleep? <laughs> you said, I wasn't asleep. And I said, yes, you were. You were snoring. And you go, how could I have been snoring if I wasn't asleep? I wasn't asleep. And I was like, you've been snoring for 30 minutes. You were asleep. You're like, no, I haven't been asleep. I wasn't sleeping, so I wasn't snoring. And it was the craziest <laughs> gaslighting. Like, you were desperately trying to convince me. That's not gaslighting. Yes, it is. You're trying to I convince know the person they're crazy. Is, and that's not he, it. Eric does not know what gaslighting is, even though I've explained it a million times. Um, it is used way too commonly these days because it should be reserved for people who are in a seriously like right. anyway uh, abusive like manipulative relationship but people use it all the time anyway the, the the point is that you were trying to convince me that something that was factual and true and did happen that you had done a snore did not happen and I was crazy for thinking such a thing so it was the funniest conversation to me that he, yeah. he literally woke up saying why did you wake me up <laughs> So he said, why did you wake me up? I said, because you were snoring. And you said, but I wasn't asleep. Well, here's well, so you but started see, I the conversation by saying I it remember woke this up. because I was so in and out of, of sleep that night because I was very restless. Right. And I'd an hour prior to that, like one in the morning, been woken up by Flynn, mm -hmm. you know, woke up from a bad dream or something. And then he had crawled into bed with us. So I'd like fallen was trying so hard to fall asleep and didn't think I was going to, was in and out of it so lightly that like. Well, not for that last 30 I, minutes, but. Yeah, I can remember you doing this to wake me up from snoring. Then I'm like, why is she doing that? I'm awake. I'm <laughs> like, I can't be snoring. I'm awake. She he must just be, me on it be so lovingly hard. touching my arm. He fought me on it pretty hard. Yeah. Um, but I guess uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed. I apologized. No, because you, I didn't you care had the next day we it had to drive. Very funny. Thousand Oaks for you to perform, and you were there all day. So, like, I'm sure you were. I'm sad you didn't get a good night's rest because then I woke up in the morning uh, <laughs> next to Flynn in our bed, and you were not there. No. And Flynn woke up very early, and I'm like, "What's going on?" And she must have gotten up early to work to get ready for her show. Uh, and then I found you sleeping on the bottom bunk of his bunk bed yeah. in his room. Well, because then after I, I woke you up from you not I'm sleeping. So sorry. You said, I'm, because the rest of that conversation was, you said, I'm not asleep. Like, I wasn't asleep. I wasn't snoring. And I was like, yes, you were. And you're like, well, I'm having the hardest time sleeping. I literally cannot fall asleep. I can't be asleep. So you get, I could hear behind what you were saying, like, how dare you wake me up? Because I'm having a hard time falling asleep. Like, well, kind of I, vibes. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it was frustrating. So if I get, if I wake up, it's so hard for me to fall back right. asleep. Right. And so that's why I never wake you up unless I like feel like you're going to hurt yourself with your snores. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, I was like, um, okay, I, uh, you know, you go back to sleep. You fell back asleep within a millisecond and we're immediately snoring again, which is great. I'm glad you got back to sleep. But then I was like, I do need to sleep. It's like three in the morning. I have a show yeah. tomorrow. So I kept trying to fall asleep, but like you just really kept snoring. You really were in that deep sleep. I wasn't mad about it, but I did keep trying to wake you up lightly and be like, Hey, you're snoring. Can you roll over? Cause usually if he's snoring, if I can get him to like wake up to roll over, he'll stop snoring long enough for that. I can pass out. But this night it was just not, there was not you that. Hate me. No, I don't. I really wasn't mad. I was just like, and I felt bad. I didn't want to have to keep waking you up. Yeah. So after like an hour of it, I was like, okay, I'm just going to go sleep in the other room. That way he can sleep and keep snoring. And then I can sleep and not hear it. So then I went to the other room to sleep in the bunk bed. I really didn't care. I wasn't mad at all, but I was, um, you know, I just loved the conversation. I thought it was so funny that you asked me, why did you wake me up Yeah. to then say, well, I wasn't asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think I finally figured out what a uh, gaslighting is then. Yeah. It's like, it's like doing something to mm -hmm. hurt someone or to harm them or to just doing anything kind of, and then trying to convince the person that that isn't true and they're crazy. Yeah. Like I was crazy for thinking you were snoring when that in fact didn't happen. Well, I don't happen, think you're crazy. Thing. You did that night, but it's okay. I knew it was sleepy Eric. And at least you weren't, you weren't yeah. mean. You don't were just like sleepy Eric. Don't trust sleepy Eric guys. Well, like a sleep, a sleepy sleep Eric. 
Yeah, but it's okay. I love you. It was very funny. I was very, the second it happened, I was like, I cannot wait to tell this on the podcast no, because it's that so funny. I, I, I said, <laughs> I remember exactly what I said now too. You go, I wasn't asleep. And I said, you were snoring awake. <laughs> <laughs> He said, no, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't snoring. But I was like, you're snoring awake. And I said it full volume with Flynn sleeping between us. Like, didn't even think like, oh, this could wake him up. This conversation. I was like, you were yeah. sleeping awake? Are you snoring awake? It was very funny. Oh, man. Um, it's okay. You snore when you sleep. I look like a monster mummy when I sleep with my mouth gaping open. Well, do you think I need some sort of medical intervention? Uh, <clears throat> I hope not. I think that I, maybe a nose strip helps those things sometimes. I've heard. Try that maybe. Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, maybe, maybe you have sleep apnea or something like that. I couldn't, um, sleep in a mask. I don't feel like that. I couldn't do oh, that. Yeah. That I can sounds... barely sleep as it is. Yeah. Um, I know people who do it. Like I can't even sleep with like Invisalign in, you know? I know, but I feel like for people who have it, I'm not saying you do, I don't know anything about it. it but I, yeah. They say like, they go from like feeling groggy and tired all day. Cause they never hit that REM cycle. Well, I do feel tired and groggy all day. I know. That's why I'm like, maybe there's some there. Cause like, um, the, I guess that like, since you never hit that REM cycle, you never get a deep sleep. So you're just tired all the time. And then once you're able to do, I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about this, by the way. I'm not saying any oh, of this. I'm sorry. I thought you were a doctor. I, I am, but I'm not really. Um, I just know people who've had, who have the sleep mask for sleep apnea. And they say that like, it's, changed their life like immensely. I also saw today a TikTok. That what? I saw a TikTok where this man was talking um, to this like doctor person, supposedly, who knows, allegedly. And he was saying that you cannot survive on less than six hours of sleep a night. Less than six hours of sleep a night is suicide, is what he was saying. And I was like, well, call me dead because I haven't <laughs> no. had more than six hours of sleep uh, in years. I know. And so I'm I was like, what is this? Dead. And then some, and then the guy, the person he was talking to goes, so if that's true, then like, what about the people who say that they like live on five hours of sleep a night and they're fine. They like thrive. And the guy was like, well, the percentage of people who can survive on less than six hours of sleep a night, um, the people who can survive that the percentage is zero. And I was like, what is this guy talking about? Cause like, I literally don't know a mother. <laughs> It's so weird. It's more than six hours of sleep, but TikTok night. TikTok doctors, when they're just like nodding, pointing up to something. Oh, I'm not yeah. into like TikTok <laughs> doctors. Don't, so not only are you saying, I'm, here's my advice. I'm not a doctor. Here's secondhand some doctor on TikTok's advice. Don't I, don't, I was like, well, I don't, don't agree with this, this person. I was like, that can't don't be true because I'm alive. Podcast. Anyway, I want to say thanks to our next sponsor, which yeah. I'm so excited about. It's base, guys. I am obsessed. You guys, base is so amazing. And we talk about them all the time and I love I them. I'm obsessed. so grateful they keep sponsoring our podcast. Um, I legit want to buy all new base suitcases for all my tour stuff. That's fine. I just, I kind of just want to travel only so I get to use it Truly, more. It's so good. Okay. I so I don't care about where we go just so I can use my base, uh, little rolly, rolly so guy. Good. You guys, there is, listen, there's a solution to organizing your fast paced, Boss Babe Lifestyle with the Weekender Bag. It is my fave. I love the Weekender Bag. I use it for everything. Uh, the Weekender Bag from Base, it's so amazing. You Gone do. are the days of having to sacrifice style for function. You're able to keep track of all of your things. Hello, key leash and laptop sleeve, while also dressing to impress everywhere that you go. Easily transition from day to night, boardroom to bar with Base. Base was created by actress Shay Mitchell. Mitchell, excuse me. I know her name. I'm just fluttered because Fantastic I'm just so actress. excited. Shay Mitchell to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories designed to help you travel effortlessly while still looking fashionable. Base is thought of everything you could ever want in a piece of luggage. 360 degree gliding wheels, a cushion handle, built-in weight indicator, washable bags for your dirty clothes, and all the interior pockets you need to keep organized. Their luggage comes in multiple sizes and colors. And for shorter trips, the Weekender bag is super functional and even has a place to store your shoes separately, which I use every time I travel. It's so nice. I've never it was able to tour before with multiple pairs of shoes. And now I can bring like boots. And you do. You always I use that. We, and we have another I'm one of those obsessed. Weekender bags that you use as, as a, a diaper, diaper bag. bag. I love and you it, you keep guys. diapers in the bottom. I really do. It's amazing. Um, it comes in multiple sizes and colors. Like I said, it's amazing. Every piece is made to look uh, better with miles, so you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. And Base has over 30,000 five-star reviews. Whether you're packing for a trip that's quick or looking to breeze through the security line, Base has your personal items covered. Right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash relax. Go to basetravel.com slash relax for 15% off your first purchase. That's B-E-I-S 
travel.com slash relax. Truly guys, my favorite suitcase I've ever ever traveled with. And I'm so close to pulling the trigger on buying like six huge ones for my tour because that's how much I love these suitcases. Use our code if you do. I will. All righty, lovey. We're back. We're back. I love you. I love you too. I just wanted to say that because I just was kind of nagging on you about the- That's fine. About the snoring thing. Can I do something real quick I want to do? I did something the the other day and it elicited the most insane reaction from you. Oh, no. Can you hold my microphone for me? Sure. What is happening? Wait, what are you doing? Just drinking water weird? I don't understand. You did this the other day? But I don't understand. What you, you had the most insane reaction. Now you have no reaction. Wait, I don't even remember this happening. What are you talking about? You just drank water in the weirdest <laughs> no, way I've ever seen. I was so thirsty the other morning when I woke up that like I I I <laughs> crunched a water bottle like into what? my mouth because I was I so thirsty, and you freaked out. This must have been your other girlfriend. I do not remember this. No, it wasn't her. What? When did the, was this? Were well, we in bed? Where was very this? Very anticlimactic. Wait, what did I do? First of all, I you don't like, remember this. You were like, Jesus! Oh my God! This is crazy. <laughs> that's the most insane. You go. That's the most insane thing I've ever seen. You said it a thousand times. This. <clears throat> when was this? And now I like, did couldn't even do it good. Wait, but you did that, and I'm like I not can't as rem- thirsty as I thought. Well, because I'm just so shocked because I just saw you do that, and in my head, I'm like, what it's is he doing? The worst moment so in <laughs> podcast history just happened. <laughs> Oh my god! Because I was like, when is he going to do the thing that? Let's just call this episode embarrassing. My husband. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, I didn't have a bigger reaction. I just didn't know what you were doing there. I was very confused out, and now you don't even remember. Okay, I literally wrote in my phone. I'm like, oh, I have to do that on the podcast. I had something I wanted to talk about. That was she was so insane. So there is something that um, is was big on TikTok for a while, like a year or two ago, that was like talking about X, right? And I've talked about kind of before on the podcast, like X, and it started as like girls would talk about X that guys would do that would like turn them off. And it was like stupid little things. It wasn't like actual bad things. It was all joke. It was like when a guy wears like socks with sandals or like something or, you know, like stuff like that, like weird things. Or like Uh if a guy trips a little when he's walking and then like looks around to see if anyone notices or like checking his pockets before he leaves the house for his keys, like stupid things that I should not give you know if your keys are there. (laughs) It's just dumb things. Uh And so it was like a funny thing on TikTok for a hot minute. So now it's kind of grown. So they've done like, X, now that there was a trend where you use that voice changer where you talk about X with your partner, like things that give each other the ick of things the you do. Ick? I thought about doing it with you yeah, on, a, they, uh, on an episode. Talk? Can you do the voice? It's like kind of nasal. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, like yeah, it's that. like that. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, that one. Yeah, we should do one, but without using the filter and just talk okay. about that. We should do a whole podcast episode using that filter. Let's do it right now. Do this, tell the rest of your story like that. To the re- tell the rest of the story. You just do the Do the voice. Well, no, not unless it is the filter. Oh, you're not like pretend to do the voice. Yeah, no. like, actually have <laughs> oh my voice. God. <laughs> so anyway, the, so that was popular for a while. So the ick went from like girls talking about little things that like guys do. Um, and guys got really offended by this, by the way. And there were guys doing like, well, this is my ick for girls when they're ugly. You know right. And I was like? No, that's not why it's funny. You guys, you don't get it. Mm-hmm. But now like people are just doing icks about everything. Like people just say, oh, this gives the ick. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I wrote down something in my relax notes in my phone that gives me the ache big time. I feel like I've certainly talked about it on here before. But the reason I wanted to bring it up is because I have a lot of strange icks in life in general, not with like you, but just like life things that uh-huh. no one can relate to. For example, stickers on fruit. People right. know this. This is, gives me the biggest ick. Like makes me gag. I think it's so gross. Yeah, you literally gag. I've never in my whole life met another person who feels the way that I do about stickers on like fruit. I think they're, it's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I won't sad. even take them off. I can't touch them. Right. I, if I touch them, I will literally throw up. Like if I'm not kidding, I will gag. Like when you get groceries, the first thing you say to me is, Hey, can you take all the stickers and, off? Oh my God. And if you take off a, st- a sticker of fruit and then you stick it on the counter, <laughs> Oh, right. nobody's my. doing that. People do that all the, you used to do it all the time. You know, you don't do it now. But anyway, the point is I've got some weird ones and I wrote one down. That's weird. But I was watching a video of my brother and my sister-in-law post. They have a YouTube channel and they posted a video with their daughter, Bailey, who's, um, you know, teenage girl. It was like, it just snapped down her and her life and what she's been up to. And someone had asked the question, like, what's um, your biggest pet peeve or something like that? Something you don't like, something like that. And she said styrofoam. And I talked to Jessica about it, my sister-in-law. And she was saying, like, how did you not know this? She like 
is just absolutely disgusted by styrofoam. It is his biggest ick. Like she thinks it is so foul. And it's the first time in my life where I have found someone else who felt some way about something so random. I've never met someone like I don't like styrofoam, but like I don't think I don't, of it that who, way. I don't think anybody does. I don't I don't like I don't styrofoam. know anyone who likes it, but it's not that she doesn't like it. It's like she feels about styrofoam the way that I do about gotcha, like yeah. fruit stickers. And I realize there's something else that makes me feel that way. And I feel like I might've talked about it on here, but not to a certain extent. So I was on tour and I ordered room service and, um, I'm now I'm like almost certain we've talked about this. It's been over a hundred episodes. I've sorry guys, but when you get food and they put saran wrap over it. So when you get yeah. room service, they mm-hmm. put saran wrap over the water, the glass of water, they put saran wrap over the little Your dish Coke, of ketchup, I'm sure. over the Coke, over anything that's in a dish over, if you get yogurt, in a bowl of yogurt, oatmeal, like yeah. they put saran wrap over it. I think that's for your protection. Now, of course it is. It's for sanitary reasons. I appreciate that they do it because of that. But saran wrap gives me the biggest ick. Yeah, I don't like it. I think it is so like, so they brought the, I, I wrote it down because they brought me my room service and um, I had a water and the water, I was so thirsty uh-huh. and the water had saran, the glass had saran wrap on it. And I like, it took all of my strength to touch it. Really? You can't just do it? To take it off. Oh. And then I was like, I can't drink this. Yeah. I couldn't drink it because the surrender had touched it. Isn't that, I, 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 there's something wrong with me. Yeah. That's I, I, not okay. I don't think, yeah, no, that's not okay. I know. That's why I wrote it. I was like, I'm literally in the hotel room alone. And then I out loud to myself, go, what is wrong with you? Like drink this water. I was so thirsty, but in my mind I had made up like the saran wrap has touched it. It is contaminated, which it should be the other way around. It should be, there was no saran wrap on this. It was just living in the free air in this hotel, getting everyone's hotel germs all on, on this journey up to me. Yeah. Like I should have been like, oh, this is the cleanest weather saran wrap on it. But it's in my mind, what saran wrap has touched this, you cannot drink it, it is poison. And I out loud in the hotel room go, what is wrong with you? Like, yeah. and I couldn't drink it. And I hated myself for that moment. And I wrote it down in my you phone. You really like, didn't drink it? Even I couldn't, I couldn't get past yeah. it. And it reminded me of like, I've seen these TikToks sometimes. Sorry, I'm all over the place. <laughs> um, I've seen TikToks sometimes about people where they're like, when you're eating chicken and then suddenly you become very aware that you're eating chicken. Have you seen those? Yeah. Or like you're eating uh, no, eggs and you've become very aware of the, the, the texture of the eggs. Okay. And then you can't eat it anymore. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. It reminded me of that. Like once the thoughts in your head, you're like, I can't have this. Sorry. I think you need cognitive therapy <laughs> or something. I need a lot of things. Uh is there, but anyway, the point is, is there anything that gives you the ick like that? That's like a normal thing that you're just like, Bleh. that would make me die of dehydration? No. No, not that, but just like, I'm trying to get on your playing field here. Um, are we back here now? <laughs> During the podcast, Eric and I, if you ever see it, if, you're, if you watch the episodes and not just listen, if you ever see me ever like trying to nudge Eric forward or if I'm scooting back to try, I'm always trying, cause Eric. Does this one change focus or something? This camera? I don't know how cameras work. It can't. Some, some of my cameras that we use, like change focus and we have to be like the equal yeah. amount of distance from the lens. But Eric, I, he likes to scooch away from I the just, camera. I'm just shifty. It's, it's, I'm just a shifty guy. Away. So I'm always trying to get on your level. But anyway, um, um, uh, so, but there, but are there things that give you the ick like that in life? I can't think of anything like, no, like not that would make me cause myself to starve not or, that, or but not like just anything that's like so or, gross. You're like, Ugh, that's so nasty. Or like, um, ew, that's so gross. It might no, be just I, a normal thing. Really? I kind of just do gross stuff all the time and I have no problem with it. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, there's certain things that I don't like, but there's nothing that would ca- like, yeah, I mean, sure. Like, I, I don't want them to put the saran wrap on there. I can't, I can't really even. What's that like? I can't even use saran wrap. I don't even know how to make it come out of the thing and then cut it good. Styrofoam. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it when it like breaks off into little pieces and like the static electricity that, makes it touches you to and you. it stays on you. Sure, but like it's it's not going to stop me from living my life. Oh my god, what's it like being neurotypical? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds amazing. I, yeah, I don't know. There's really nothing that like gives you like major like Ugh, I can't touch that. I can't look at that. That's so gross. No. I just have like g- oh. like general anxiety. That's kind of like my bag. You yeah. know, I'm not I'm not into like very specific functional um, phobias. I can touch regular saran wrap that's clean right out of the box. I can do that. I can be like take saran wrap and put it on something. But taking saran wrap saran wrap off of something is what gives me the icky nicky. I uh, it's so gross. Yeah, like I said, there's. I think you need to be hypnotized. I've tried and that. Talked and talked through these things. I think I was there when you were hypnotized and 
Were you? You did a video once where a hypnotist yes. hypnotized you and you ate an onion like it was an apple. Yeah, I was. I was hypnotized. You were there. I was. I, were you there? I think you were. I, I was, was sitting next to you. Yeah. I was pregnant with Flynn and didn't know it at the time. Yeah. Or maybe I didn't. I don't think I knew it yet. Um, but didn't you say, I feel like afterwards you were like, I knew I was eating an onion or something. Yeah. It, yeah. It was weird. I know everyone's hypnotizing journey, whoever's been hypnotized out there is different. I could go deep into this, but you know, we do need to say thanks to our next sponsor, but like, it's a very weird experience being hypnotized because I was hypnotized, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I don't think I could ever be hypnotized. I think you could. No, there's like this, like those sleep apps and stuff like that, where they try and talk you into sleep. And I'm always just in there. Like they make me more awake. I don't, yeah, those don't so, work for me either. So it's like, but they're essentially, it's a, I think it's a version of like hip, not hypnosis, but so, you know, they're talking you mm-hmm. into a state it's like a meditation, of relaxation, yeah. like a meditation or something like that. And I'm always just like, my brain is just going do to do. Nope. Not See, working. mine does too. Like those I, meditation I fight apps, it. But so I don't think I would ever, I don't think, I think I would be succep- su- successful. I think you could do it. I, I, think to could, it? I didn't think I would be able to, and it happened to me. I, I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. It's a little bit freaky, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. Cause I kind of do want to talk about that for a second, but first I want to say thanks to our next sponsor, of course. which is green chef, green chef. Thanks to green chef for sponsoring this episode. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you green chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. They've got variety and customization. You can customize it to however you like. And they're now offering 10 minute lunches, which sounds right up my alley. Each week's menu includes two convenient, low prep and nutritious lunch recipes ready in just 10 minutes. No cooking required. Perfect for when you're on the go or pressed for time at the office. Eat well at lunchtime too, guys. Hello. But do they have chicken enchiladas? I sure hope so, because we can never eat the ones I made again. No, uh, they've got a- options for every lifestyle They, uh, you know, they have options for people. Like I said, keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, gluten free. Um, and they're the only keto meal kit. So Green Chef makes sticking to a carb conscious lifestyle pretty easy if that's what you're into. And in 2023, you can help yourself to delicious, convenient recipes that support your healthy lifestyle and taste good too. You can eat well in the new year without sacrificing taste. It's convenient and easy. It's sustainable. They feature organic produce, premium protein, sustainably sourced ingredients. Raise your food standards in 2023, guys, and reap the flavor benefits um, it's pretty awesome. So if you guys want to check it out, you can. We've really enjoyed it. Um, we've we've tried a few of the different recipes. I'm excited to try out more. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was your favorite, Lovey? My favorite? Mm-hmm. Uh, the steak fajitas. Pretty delish, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Who doesn't have a steak fajita? I just like things sizzling, you know what I mean? And when it's already like kind of there for you, ready to go. I know. So amazing, but it really helps you to save time. You don't have to think about like prepping the meal. You don't have to think about, you know, you don't have to think about anything. You just think about like, Hey, I'm going to eat this delicious food. And it's so fast. Yeah. It's really convenient. It's really nice. It doesn't even come in saran wrap. No, which is really wonderful. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's great for us. And it also helps us to be a little bit more conscious about what we're putting into our body as opposed to just like ordering fast food. I know? am trying to be more carb conscious. I'm not going to lie. Keto is something I've got a little flirty with. Yeah, but I don't think I could go f- like full. Right. Yeah, I'm just keto well, curious. Eric, Eric doesn't keto know curious. Eric doesn't. I don't know that Eric knows what a carb is because he'll say I'm not <laughs> eating any carbs, and then I'll be I'll be like, oh, you're eating a wrap today instead of a sandwich. He's like, yeah, I'm not eating carbs. I'm like, that's a tortilla. There's sometimes I think you're not sure what a. But anyway, okay. <laughs> so go to greenchef.com slash relax60. Uh, that's greenchef.com slash relax60 and use code relax60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That is greenchef.com slash relax60. Use code relax60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. So guys, go check it out. You can get the number one meal kit for eating well. And uh, you might just love it. Okay, so getting hypnotized. I'll talk about this for two seconds because it's no, probably not interesting. Forever. No, but I was hypnotized for a video <clears throat> and I, I thought this isn't going to work on me, but I really wanted it to work because I knew it would be a good video if it worked. Mm. 
So I was like, I hope this guy is good. It, we got him from a real, you know, we searched best hypnotist and he was a good hypnotist. He's a real one. And I was, uh, I was with my sister and Corey and they were like, we're not doing it. And I was like, I'll do it. Cause I wanted a good video. I was hoping to get some good content, you know, but I was really worried because I was like, there's no way someone would be able to hypnotize me. Um, but he did for real. Now I thought, when you get hypnotized, you'd be like completely unconscious and just like be like a zombie and be like, I will do whatever this person says like that. Yeah. And that is not how it felt at all. I feel like I've only seen them at like school assemblies, yeah. you know, like that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was weird. It was like, I was very aware. I was awake and I was aware of everything that was going on. Um, but I just did, I was just like, Oh, he told me to do this. Show, so I should do it. Like, but I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, I'm hypnotized right now, so I have to pretend to be hypnotized and do this. I didn't think that. But I also wasn't like, oh, I must do what this man says to me. It wasn't like that. It was like, um, I just felt very, very relaxed. I felt kind of like I was sleeping, kind of like I was dreaming. And he would tell me to do something. And it was like, oh, I like I took a bite of a raw um, you took onion. many bites of a raw onion. Yeah. And he told me this is an apple. It's the most delicious apple you've ever had. And you're going Eat to, this it apple. was crazy. And it didn't taste like an apple. It tasted like an onion. And it, I knew it was an onion. And I was just like, oh, he wants me to pretend this is an apple. Okay. Like I just, you I feel hate like I was, raw onions. I hate raw onions. Um, to the point where like, if I'm ordering food and Eric orders something that has onions on it, I will say no onions to Eric's food. Yeah. I'm not allowed to eat onions. Um, you can eat onions. Just if I order, I'll make sure to get them taken off. Like I don't even <laughs> want to smell them. But you ate but like half a I whole know. onion raw. And I think, and quickly. I wouldn't do that not hypnotized. I would not do it not hypnotized. I don't think you'd physically be able to. No. So it was just like, I felt very calm, very relaxed and very kind of sleepy. And I just, I knew what was going on. I knew it wasn't an apple. I remember thinking, oh, this is an onion. He wants me to eat it like it's an apple. Okay, I'll do that. Like, I just felt like chill, like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll do that. But I will say he had me do a bunch of stuff like, oh, you, you know, your legs are heavy, you can't walk, you know, whatever random stuff he had me do. But then he, um, we put a bunch of stickers on me for a video. Oh no, yeah, he had Rachel or someone put stickers on me during it. Cause that's your biggest. Cause that's my biggest like ick is like these little tiny stickers that go on fruit. <clears throat> and I will say that during that, he said, you love these stickers. You know, this is so great. And I remember thinking, I hate this so much. I'm so uncomfortable. This is so awful. And that was the only time during the whole hypnosis that I was like, felt like I had to act really hard. Like I was hypnotized. You like faking it? I wasn't faking it because I don't think I would have been able to handle it if I wasn't hypnotized. But like, I was very aware, like with the... With the onion, I was like, oh, this is an onion. He wants me to act like an apple. All right. And I didn't care. You were just like, I didn't you were hypnotized. Was like, you were in a suggestive state. Yeah, I was just like, sure, whatever. I'm down. Like, it was just kind of like willing. Um, and, but with the stickers part, I remember thinking, I hate this so much. I want to scream. I want to scream. I want to scream. But I'm not going to. I'm being filmed. I don't want this guy to think he can't hypnotize me because I I was hypnotized for all of it. But just that, I remember that, that moment was really hard for me. But I do know that... Um, hypnosis works very, very well with therapy. A lot of therapists yeah. use it and there's like hypnosis school you go to. I actually have had a therapist who's my ther favorite therapist I've ever had, who was a genius with hypnosis. He never used it on me. We talked about using it sometimes, but like he never felt the need to use it on me at any point, but like he would talk about it a lot and how wonderful it can be. Um, and how helpful it can be to people. I know people who've used it to stop smoking, mm -hmm. to stop drinking, um, to stop bad habits, to stop intrusive thoughts, like stuff like that. So I know it can be used for good. Obviously when I did it, it was like for silliness. It was just for silly, but, um, it really is a real thing as someone who has been hypnotized. It isn't what I thought. I didn't turn into like a mindless zombie, but I did. Um, I did feel very relaxed and very like, yeah, I'll do whatever you, whatever you say. Sure. Go for it. Which I also think can be very scary. Like, it's yeah. like, I'm like, oh, it's scary. Who, who knows how to be a hypnotist in this world? Because like they could definitely use that pretty hard against someone's, well, you know what I mean? It's kind of scary to think about. I feel like there was a contestant on big brother who was like, I'm a, a hypnotist. A hypnotist. Do you remember that girl? No, maybe. Oh, maybe. And she was friends with a the guy. They almost made it to the end, but then he got voted off. She almost made it. And she was like, oh, Wait, I'm not going to tell know, anybody. 
Maybe you're right. I don't remember. I work in hypnosis or whatever. I feel like if it's a real hypnotist, like who goes to school for it, they must be told like the power and strength that that can hold and like to never use it. There's like a do no harm. Of course, I would assume so because the people who really want to learn it want to use it for good, I would assume, and not just for like an entertainment like graduation show. I don't think you can just do it to people though. You can't just like hold up a watch and be like, you're getting very sleepy. It's like you have to be willing to let it happen. So you have to be. But still that person's in a very suggestive state. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. But anyway, it was a very weird experience. It's all weird. I don't That's think I would do thing. it again. Now, knowing that I was so willing to do whatever he said, I think now being the control freak that I am, I would not want to ever do it again, knowing that it does work unless it was in therapy. And like my a therapist that I trusted wanted to do it on me for something. That's the only reason I think I would ever do Could it. Could you hypnotize me now? No, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Cause I wouldn't do anything crazy. I would just like, do you want to try? No, I don't know how. <laughs> I feel like it's dangerous if you don't know how. <laughs> um, I would have no idea even where to start. I yeah. think it's just getting someone to a very relaxed, calm state and then... Relax. Relax, man. The opposite of what we are. Anyway, that was my quick version of what it was like to be hypnotized. I love it. Maybe I'll go to hypnotist school so I can hypnotize you. Maybe you've inspired someone to go to... I think it's really cool. Hypnotize I think it's a cool school? practice when it's used well for therapy. You know, I think that's really awesome. And mm-hmm. it works very well. Anyway, sorry. Did you have a Where else of- is it used besides like party? Like I feel like cruise ships, school assemblies, magicians. Co- yeah. uh, sometimes magicians are also hypnotists. Um, and uh, those are just for silliness and for fun and giggles. But I think like most of the people who go into that are people who are therapists, I would think, because there's there's been so many positive outcomes from it. Do you think if they got like someone they thought committed a crime- to, yes. To, to uh, admit it when they were hypnotized. That I'm that was, sure they've used that. But that wouldn't be admissible in court. Yeah, that's true. I don't, I wouldn't think. I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like they must use, it. again, you have to be, in order to be hypnotized, you have to be willing to be hypnotized. That's the only way to get hypnotized. You have to let yourself get to a state of being like, I'm going to be hypnotized by this person. They are going to make me calm and make, you and have not, to get, I'm you have to I'm going to pretend to be hypnotized by this person. No, you it's, have to be legit. willing. Yeah, I don't so know. So if, unless you're willing to do that, you cannot be hypnotized. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Because I remember in um, high school when they did a hypnotist show at my graduation party or whatever, or my prom party. What um, do you mean? When I went to prom, it was the only dance I went to. Prom party? They had the a- after party. You have prom after parties? Wait, what do you mean? That was like at the school? Yeah, so it's an actually a really smart thing that the school does oh, to, like keep kids to keep kids safe, safe. after prom. Um, they have this really fun, like prom is kind of lame, actually. Everyone likes the prom after party. Like that's where it's at. So like my school did like the prom. Well, I mean, I wasn't cool, so maybe I don't know. But like um, <laughs> there's a prom. I actually really appreciate this. I, now looking back as an adult, yeah. like the at the time I just thought, Oh, this is fun. But now looking back, I'm like, Oh, they were trying to keep us safe from like doing other crazy stuff. But you go to prom and you dance. And then after prom at like starting at like midnight, we went to another venue. Like it was not even at the prom. It was like at somewhere else. And they ran out this like you and 10 other kids. No, it was everyone who went to prom. Like literally, I'm sure there are people who didn't go, but like most people go. Oh, we were just like, there would be like parties after like actual parties. Right. That's what I'm saying. I think that's what the school is trying to get us to not do to stop kids from drinking and doing whatever. Smart. So they, um, they'd have this huge, and it would be fun. Like there'd be like cotton candy and ice cream and pizza and more dancing. And there was a hypnotist and a magician. And it was just like, it was fun. It was like chaos. And you but you're like seniors in high school and mm-hmm. just had your prom mm-hmm. and you're like, let's go get cotton candy and ice cream and pizza. Um, and, and like, sorry, that doesn't sound amazing to you. I <laughs> am an adult. What you would probably want to do now. It is exactly what yeah. I would do now. Uh, well, that's um, sounds very cool. I mean, in hindsight, well, very you don't cool. have to go. No, one's no I'm saying in hindsight, that sounds cooler than what we did. Which is I think not that. That's for me, not if, if I didn't have that, like when I think about my prom, I don't think about the prom dance. I don't barely remember it. I remember the after prom and You'd how fun it was. probably be in jail. But um, yeah, I know there are people who didn't go, but like I really enjoyed it. And there were literally so many people there. That was the only dance you went to was prom? I was never asked to a, a dance. Not once in my whole I life. I would have. I would have asked you to every dance. You wouldn't have. Of course I would have. You would have. I would have asked you to every dance. You would not have. You would have had girlfriends. I bet a million dollars. You would have If we went to the same high school. I was I never asked to a dance, not one. I asked a I sophomore. I would ask you to junior prom, spring fling. Yeah, I wasn't asked. Sadie homecoming. Hawkins, though, you would have yeah. to ask me, right? Isn't that the one where like the... We didn't have a Sadie Hawkins, but yeah, the girl asked a guy. But anyway, there was a hypnotist at my after prom. Freshman dance. Uh, you would not. You would I have known I existed. You. I think we had a Halloween dance. I would have asked you. 
Yeah, I didn't go to anything. But the pro- the after prom mm. was very p- fun. And, but I do remember the hypnotist. He he brings up all these people who say they want to be hypnotized. And he sits them in chairs. Yeah. And he does the hypnosis moment. And then he says to do the first thing. Like, raise your arm up in the air or whatever. And yeah. whoever doesn't do it, he taps him on the head. He goes, go sit down. So anyone who's not able to be hypnotized, he's like, get out of here. Or anyone who's not pretending to be hypnotized. Yeah. He's like, get out of here. I feel like it'd be fairly easy to pretend to be hypnotized. Yeah. You just kind of keep your eyes closed and just do the very right. basic tasks that he asks you to do. Yeah. And then what's, isn't there like a, like a joke at the end? He like makes someone like pull their pants down or something. No, something that like would bark be like a dog. extremely inappropriate <laughs> I mean, to do at a high school prom. I mean like bark like a dog or so, like you're a dog now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I mean, that there's kind a lot of stuff. stuff like that. Like this person stole your leg, go get them, you know, and you, yeah. you but it was very fun. I, I kind of like want to watch videos of people being hypnotized now to see if like it's like I buy any of it. Did you think I was hypnotized? No, not really. No, you didn't. No, I mean the onion stuff. That's what I brought that up because like that's, it was pretty extreme. Like you were biting full on giant chunks out of a raw onion. Like, like it was an apple chewing it and swallowing it. Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm sure made you and real sick. I was pregnant with Flynn and really nauseous at the time. Yeah, and you hate and you and you would, wouldn't even eat a slice of raw onion on an In and Out no. burger if your life depended on it. So yeah, I mean, I mean, but maybe I was just like, yeah, she's very committed to this uh, bit. Yeah, I mean, and that makes sense too because like when I'm Miranda, I'll do things I would never do normally. Sure. Like I did a a, a truth or dare video with this big YouTuber way back in the day, called Ryan Higa, and. He was like, uh, we're going to do all these crazy truth or dares, these crazy dares. And are you willing to do anything? And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm probably not going to do anything. Like, I will probably not do anything. And as Miranda, they stuck a toothbrush in a toilet and I brushed my tongue with it. Oh, that's real like, gross. That's I licked not... like a tire. Like I did all these things I would have never done. But as Miranda, I was like, okay. Those so, the dares? I know, it was pretty gross. But I think I licked peanut butter off of a man's hairy armpit. I'm pretty sure I did that. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, we gotta stop for a second. <laughs> I need to reevaluate some things. Uh, Truly, so I mean, maybe I wasn't. There's a with... video on the internet of my wife licking peanut butter off the hair of another man's I think armpit. So I feel like I don't that think happened. you've ever even done that to me. Yeah, why would I ever do that to anyone on the planet? Um, <sighs> and why did you say I don't think you've ever done that to me? I feel like that's something you would definitely remember if I had done. Um, but anyway, um, I meant to only talk about that for two seconds. So then I talked about that for way too long. But hypnosis is kind of interesting, right? It, yeah, fascinated. Well, I can't tell if you're being serious no, or not. I literally <laughs> just said I want to like watch videos. I just, I'm sus. Bex. I, that's totally fair. Um, I'm going of to say practice. thanks to our next, our next sponsor. I'll really join quick. you. Okay, great. Our final sponsor today is ZocDoc. We've talked about them a lot because we love them a lot. And we're excited to talk about them again. So you guys, you know, we've all asked the question in our head. Is this normal? Is this, uh, is this mole? Is this shape normal? Why does this is one this, itch? Is this supposed to be itchy? Is this, is this rash supposed Was to look there like this? yesterday? Am I supposed to be Have- leaking strange fluids out of my cheek pores? It, I don't is- know. That was a strange, that was real weird <laughs> that I said that. But anyway, these are questions sometimes we ask and then we Google. Uh, but you don't need to Google them, guys, because there's thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc that are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care that you need. Uh, so there's definitely someone you should check out, Mr. ZocDoc. It's not just one person. It's actually a bunch of incredible Zocters. Zocters? Hey, hey. Zocters. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat most, well, almost every condition under the sun, almost every single one. When you're not feeling your best and you're just trying to hold it together, finding a great care for yourself shouldn't take up all of your energy. You need to lessen the burden of trying to find a good doctor to help you out. And that is where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. And uh, guys, I think you're going to love it. We love it. We've definitely used it. Um, I've talked about this before, but Eric used ZocDoc once, um, not once, we've used it a couple times now, but the first time he used it, I was so shocked and jealous at how quickly he found a doctor, how quickly he got an appointment. I think it was like the next day you were talking yeah, to let, a doctor. Let me know that the doctor was in my um, insurance and, you know, provider network and when they were next available and 
the, you know, everything. And found, I found, I think I found someone like the next day. Yeah. That's why I said. Yeah. That's why I said. It was so insane. So crazy. So if you guys want to check it out, go to ZocDoc.com slash relax and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Like we just said, that's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com. Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash relax. ZocDoc.com slash relax. Get a little closer, lovey. I got to put my head on your shoulder. Okay. I have a few more relaxes in my phone. Okay. There is a, there is a way that you start a sentence to me where I know oh, I'm, no. in tr- I'm in trouble. Oh, no. Do but you know what? I want to see if you can guess, Let me guess what it is. Um, I always start with lovey. Lovey. Four words. Four words. Mm, you're in trouble meaning like you did something wrong or no, trouble like, meaning like I'm about to ask you to do something. Something bad's about to happen. You're going to hate this. You're going to hate this. That's four words. But yes, that's that's another bad one. Because uh, I, 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 I noticed this because it's less common than that, I think. Okay, what is it? Just so you know. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how often you start sentences? <laughs> so I feel like it happens almost every day. Apologies. I said, just so you know. You go, you'll, just if you, so you know, like, tomorrow. If I haven't I... seen you in a bit and you walk in, you're going to be like, you, you go, just so you know. And I'm like, and my heart sinks every time. Well, you know why I do that? Can I tell you why? So that I'm informed. I do because I used so to I'm not, educated. I used to not, I was really bad at communicating like my plan or my schedule. Right. And so you'd be like, uh, there's people in our house. <laughs> there's 10 people in our house filming something right, right now. What's going on? You didn't, or like your entire family's coming in two minutes. You did right. not tell me I'm fine with that, but I would like to know these things. So we had many conversations in the beginning of our relationship of like, can you just like <laughs> tell me what's going on? Mm-hmm. And it was a hard adjustment for me, which is so weird, but like it was hard for me to force myself to remember, to re- remind you or tell you of things. Yeah. Um, and so that was my solution is to go like, just so you know, this is happening. It was like mm-hmm. my mind going like, here's a script of some, how you can tell him that something is going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's why I started doing that. It's funny. And now it just means something bad is going to happen. <laughs> it just, I just know. I'm just like, I'm always like brace myself. I would say, Well, I feel like, I feel like the more recently I'm, I'm always very good at like telling you when someone is coming over or something big's going to happen now, obviously it's not even a thought, but it's more like now if I know like, Oh, I'm going to have a really long work day tomorrow. I have a lot to do to prep for like a tour or something. Then I feel like, yeah, I would say like, Hey, just, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be working the whole day. Mm-hmm. Um, or Hey, tonight I'm hey, just, so you know, tonight's an all nighter for me. You're not going right. to see me much. It's usually kind of how it starts now, mm-hmm. but what are the other just, so you knows like, well, yeah, no, it's, it's usually just like, oh, okay, here we go. I, you know what I mean? It's like, what do you think usually follows that sentence? Isn't it usually like, I'm going to be working a lot yeah. or yeah. like I have to just, so you know, I leave town this weekend for four days right. or yeah. um, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> just, I, just thought, I just thought it was funny because because it's, it's not like you're going to hate this or. Yeah. Don't be alarmed, but. OK, but it means the same thing. Right. But it, oh, my 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 camera just died. Hold on. Let me fix that for y'all. Give me one second, kids. OK, camera's back on. We're good to go. Uh, and then one last thing. Yes. That that has occurred to me mm-hmm. that I wrote down in the relax note folder on my phone Mm -hmm. is that I don't think any human should ever be responsible for cutting the fingernails of another human being. Oh, it's the worst. I think it's hard enough for me to do this and to myself, (laughs) both toes and fingers regularly, Mm -hmm. but to be responsible to do it for three wiggly little humans. Like I just say like you have long nails and they just, whatever happens happens until you are of the age of consent. They scratch their face. To, to cut your own finger. Well, then that's just how it is. Okay, here's the deal. Let this them is, be feral until they're old enough to cut their own finger. You might be wondering why this is all of a sudden really upsetting Eric when we've had children for four years. And it's this. Eric and I are really good co-parents. I feel like we are, we're, we said last night to each other, we were like cuddling and we were like, we're a good team. We're good parents. Like you're a good dad. There's a good good balance. Like there's a really good balance. Tasks. Yeah. And so we, we've figured out the things that it's like, Hey, this is your gig. This is my gig. And here's the things that we split. Yeah. And we're pretty good about that. And so he takes on so much responsibility. He's such, he's, I'd say like out of all the dads in this country, I don't know about the rest of the world because I don't know how other cultures are, but with the American culture of the American dads out there, he does 
95% more than every other dad in this country when it comes to being an involved parent. I don't know about that. Um, he's very much involved and, and great. So we, we split a lot of the responsibilities. And one of the responsibilities that I've always taken on is cutting their nails. And I think this is because when they're babies, I was one feeding them. And so I'd be the one to notice. And that's usually a good time to be like, you know, with one breastfeeding or whatever, feel their nails, notice their nails. The rest of the time they're running around, they're crazy. And so you're not thinking about it. Right. So when I'm feeding the kids, I'm like, oh, their nails need to be done. So it's just something that I always did. And it's a very terrifying thing to do to cut a baby's nails. Even with those little baby fingernail things. I, oh, it's terrifying. You're so scared. You're going to cut them. You're going to hurt them. It's so scary. You just like wait for a and cry. They're wiggling every around, clip. They're freaking out and whatever. And um, so I've always done it. And it got to a point like maybe a month ago where I was like, all right, I'm tapping out longer Leave, than that. But yeah, maybe a couple months. But <laughs> like I was like, I'll do the babies. You're in charge of Flint's like because this is it's too many nails between the three kids and me. Yeah, we got more kids. It's now. just too many kids. Yeah, I got to step up. And um, and so and it was different when they were like really tiny babies and they were just laying there and sleeping and I could do it. And now they're like toddlers and, and Flint. It's just too much. So I was, and and Flint's in the dirt. I mean, Flint and his nails grow an inch a day. I swear to God. They do. There's, they grow so fast. And, you uh, cut his nails and the next day they are long. He could have French tips, honey. Like they are long and nails. And most days are spent be, be, digging, in, in, the digging dirt. in the dirt. Like being a truck or literally like, like digging for worms, like with your right. bare hands. And so and I was like, worms. I called the twins. You're in charge. I've done Flint for four years. It's all in you, bro. It's and so uh, now Eric's in charge of Flynn's. He's good. He now. lets me do it, but it's it's uh, it's terrifying. I just I'm, it's scary. Just I'm just gonna let him go until like he's can figure it out <laughs> <No>. for himself. <laughs> I will say though that little Mister Flynn, we have a wonderful nanny who helps us a lot, and she's um and he loves her. He adores her, and he said the other day that I said it's time to cut your nails. And he said, no, I don't want to cut my nails. I want them long. Like, and he said her name. It's, I don't mm -hmm. want to say her name, but, but he's like, I want them long like hers. Are he hers went, longer? Well, she has kind of longer nails. She has uh -huh. like pretty, like, you know, like girly nails. She always has manicured nails. Gotcha. They're not like long nails. Right, right, they're just right. like, you know, they're just pretty oh, good. that's so sweet. He, but he wanted them yeah. like hers. And, um, and so, yeah. And the other day he wanted them painted like hers. Like I don't mm -hmm. paint my nails ever, but hers are always manicured. And, and she painted his nails for him the other That's day. So and fun. he was like, these are so cool. And she said that he goes, anyone who looks at my nails, they're going to say, wow, those are so cool. So cute. Yeah. Um, and then and so, they did, they did look they really did cool. Look cool. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I agree. Cutting baby's nails is the worst. It's a hard thing to do. It's not fun. And it seems like you have to do it every day almost. Yeah, with these kids. it really does. I just noticed right before we podcasted, I was holding Wesley and I was like, your nail, I cut your nails two days ago, bro. And they're like, they're long, like they're yeah. long. And the babies, you really do have to cut well, them. She just because, scratched herself. Right. The babies will scratch right before themselves. This, went, yeah. And, and so you like have Wolverine. to keep them yeah. short. Did you have another one or is that it? I feel uh, like you must have more. You always have a long list of things to chat about. I have, uh, yeah, I have one more. Okay, what is it? I was going to save it, but. Don't save it. Let it go. Um, w The last house we lived in. Mm -hmm. Years. Mm -hmm. I never figured out how the light switches worked. Like yeah. the whole time. And right. so I like, now we're in a new house and I'm like, I'm going to like, I'm going to know the light switches, but there's a problem here. It's not that there's too many or whatever. It's just that sometimes you flip them up to turn them off. And sometimes you flip them down to turn them you off. You know why though, right? And then there's like a whole row of them and I'm starting to learn like, okay, like down, down, this one has to go up to go off. And it, and I'm the one where like, I, I've taken on the responsibility at the end of the night to turn off all the lights because someone likes to leave lots of lights on, mm -hmm. TVs on, mm -hmm. et cetera. So I'll go around, do a sweep of doors and lights, you know? And I, it's so crazy to me that like some... And then some, uh, some over here will turn on that light off and on, but it has to go down. It's really confusing. So the problem is that in this house, there are light switches in each room. In most rooms, there are two light switches that go to the same light. Yeah. So like if you're at the end of a hall and you turn a light on, on the other end of the hall. Now that's become that's the off? off. So no, no. So it's like, let's yes. say you turn on the light and then you walk down the hall and you turn off the light at the other end. Now the other end of the light is, is on. on. So it's like, that's why it switches Fair. back and forth. Yes. But there's, there are ones where it is not, that is not applicable where you still, you turn it down to turn it yes, on. And you turn it on. It's very confusing. I see what you're saying now. And that makes perfect sense. But like, and I'm not an electrician, um, but like, it just seems like, 
on off is what it should be. I think it's, it's a really old house that we live in. And I think over the years they've done a lot of adjustments and just some things got messed up a little bit. Yeah, sure. But like, this is not this, it was the same in the last house and I'm sure other people are in their homes right now. Our last house did like, not do that. It did. It did. There it, were not light switches that would be up or there down. There light switches. Room. I literally didn't even know what they did. And I never figured it out for years. Can I tell you something I would funny? Press them. I, there's light switches now where I don't, and I'm sure somebody's sitting at home and it's like, yeah, I don't know what that light switch does or, or why do I have to turn it the other way? I don't know. Can I tell you something funny? So Corey's I don't think I can stop you. <laughs> Corey's staying with us right now. Uh-huh. And um it's great. It's a wonderful house to have people stay with us and it's it's been wonderful having That's him here. Hilarious. I love him here. What's hilarious? We said you had something funny. Oh my God. <laughs> Ew. Is that Ick. a Nick? <laughs> yes. You won't let me finish my story before you like uh, you need to get off douchebag TikTok is what you need to do. <laughs> um Anyway, he said there was a light. He's like, oh my God, Colleen, there's a light switch in my room. Mm -hmm. That I was like, what is this? It goes to nothing. He tried every outlet. He tried everything. He's like, there's just like this light switch. I didn't understand why it was in there. And I always accidentally turn it on or off and be like, what is this for? I don't understand. After living here for over a month, Uh he realized it controls the like lamps on our gate outside. So the light switch to turn on and off the lamps outside, like where you can't even see from his room or in the house at all. The light switch that is in his room. And he's like, so if you or Eric was like, why are the lights out tonight? Or why are the lights on tonight of the front? It's he's like, it's in my room. And I had no idea. So I'd be like, well, here's on the and thing. Off. there's one for that by our front door for that light too. See, isn't that weird? So, and, I, and that's one of the ones that I always have to turn what would be off to turn them on in a series. It's the only one in that yeah. series. And it's probably because he had turned and see now it makes sense. Yeah, probably see? I didn't know there was another switch somewhere see? else in the house for that same light. But it's and like since, on the other side of the house. And he set off so a weird. butterfly effect that has ruined all light oh, switches please. He had no idea. No, but he felt really bad. He was like, oh my God, what the heck? I don't understand. No, and sometimes, um, yeah, I've turned that off and been like, how is it back on again? Yeah. And there was one night where I was, I actually talked about this in a meet and greet when you weren't there, wherever uh, I was touring last in Florida. And, um, someone talk, asked me to talk about paranormal experiences and was asking about ghost things. And Can you tell the thing that happened to me? <laughs> I did because, so I, and we actually get that comment all the time on here. People are always like, do an episode about paranormal stuff, do an episode about ghost stories. I think we should do one, like an episode I'm in the scared. dark. I'm scared of, uh, upsetting. Cause I know this house is haunted. I'm glad you admit it. Like I know it is. And I thought, but the story you're getting to is that I full on thought I had like my first I know, legit, and I ruined it. Like full on paranormal experience. I and told I us totally at the had chills, like accepted it. I, I'm like, I have to tell Colleen, like, just, you know, like, hey, guess what? Uh, yeah. I believe in ghosts. Like, I know. Okay. I, so I, I essentially communicated with one. Right. So I, this has been an ongoing discussion between me and Eric. Cause I like, I do think that ghosts or spirits or something is out there. So that is all real stuff. And I've had experiences with that kind of stuff. So I think allegedly, whatever you believe. Um, and, um, he does not believe any of that to be true, which is fine and fair as well. And so someone asked something about you believing in it or whatever. And I said, no. And I said, but I ruined it because there was one night where I went down a hall uh, in our house and we're still getting used to this house. And I like turned the lights on and then I was like, Oh wait, actually I don't want the lights on in here. I want them off. So I turned them off and I turned them back on again or something. I was like, no, I want them on. I don't know. I was having this a moment. Light, by the way, also flickers for some yeah, reason. It flickers like when it, anyway, so then I go to bed and then I see all the lights turn. I see Eric. <laughs> you didn't know I could see you. <laughs> I see you walking down the hall and you stop. And you like turn around and you like are looking around all like you saw you I saw you like kind of look spooked You're making and he turned around and walked away. The lights went off and then you he came and told me like, hey, I think you called me You're like I just had the I, I can't remember if you called me or came in, but you're like, I just had the craziest experience. Are you OK? Like all the lights just flickered around me. I think it was a ghost like I'm freaking out. There's no one here. There's no one around. You're in bed but the lights just flickered. Well, it was like I had touched it. Like I, tr- and it turned on again. It was like, it was, there was, it was a moment. There was, it was a very. Yeah. And I do think that there's this one like walking path hall area of our house that I do very much think is haunted and feel something there all the time. And that was the area that it happened. in. I'd say it's like the creepiest area of the house. And, um, so th- that's where it had happened to. So he was like, and I had to have this moment in my mind of like, do I admit that it was me. Of course or you do. Do I 
let him believe in ghosts finally <laughs> because he's always said I'm lying and or not lying, but just like I'm mistaken that would have been in deceptive. my beliefs. And I was like, I have to tell, obviously I have to tell him I can't, but I was like, Oh, if I just don't say anything, he'll believe. But then I was like, it was me. I went in there and I turned off the lights and then I realized I need them on. These like, light switches with other light switches. So Who he knows? almost was a believer, but I've ruined it. Anyway, thanks for listening to this episode. Let me know if you do want a full paranormal episode. I think we should. I'm Not. down. Okay. He doesn't you want to. You still do. have that Ouija board in the house. I, I do have a Ouija should, board. You got to get that out of here, man. Come on. Just even in the house. I don't, it freaks me you out. You know, Corey and I both say we experience the same thing in this house, which is like, we both heard and seen things that we think or whatever, but, um, I think it's friendly. I think, yeah, I think, I don't think it's one person, but I also think whoever they are, they're friendly and nice. But I, also, um, Corey and I, he's like, the biggest thing that happens to me in this house is I see someone at, out of the corner of my eye all the time. And I do too. I do too. I, I do too. See, I swear to you, this has never happened to me in my life. And when Corey said that, I was like, that's exactly what happens to me. But there's weird, like, um, it's like someone in your peripheral you vision. You gave me chills. Cause I always do this too. Is what I'm saying constantly in this I'm house. Saying, so you'll be walking, you'll walk into a room or you'll walk down a hall and out of the corner of your eye, like right at the edge of your peripheral vision, you'll see a figure. And then you turn to look and there's nothing there. It happens all it the happens time. It happens to me I don't like seeing it. No, we're not doing day. a paranormal episode because already this, this little Isn't talk about it. Isn't that crazy? Because Corey said it happens to him. And I, I was didn't like, ask for to this. Me. I didn't ask to know this. Literally it happens all the time. I'll be walking around like the it. house and I'll see someone. I'll be like, Ick. there's someone there. And I'll look and I'll th- hope it's you or Corey. And then there's nothing there. It happens yeah. every day. Anyway, we're going to leave you on that. I'm all and scared. <laughs> thanks for listening. We'll see See you guys next week. Bye. Bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.